Hello everyone, welcome to the class of AI and today we are going to develop a model for COVID-19 detection. So if you go here, you will see in my repository of GitHub, I have created a code for DL COVID-19. So here what we are going to do, we are going to develop a basic deep learning model which will use the CT scan, CT images of lungs to detect the COVID patients, means to detect the COVID. And uh, if you see that the data set which we are going to use has been obtained from this data set. So if you go click here, you see that this is the data set produced by some Chinese group and uh, means the utility of this data set has been confirmed by the senior radiologist in Tongji Hospital, Wuhan, China, who has performed diagnostic and treatment on the of a large number of people on COVID patient during outbreak disease from January to April 14. And if you see in, in my notebook, you see the images will be like this, that some of the images because I've just shown one COVID CT and one non-COVID CT. So you can see this is a, a CT of a COVID patient and this is a CD of a non-COVID patient and in uh, we'll go into more details about the images and other thing but in a nutshell what we'll see that there are four 349 CT images contain the clinic, clinical findings of COVID-19 patients and altogether there are 216 patients right uh, in the COVID collection so we the population is 216 over here and the images are have been broken into two parts COVID CT images and non COVID CT images. And let's now jump uh, to the repository where I have created this notebook for you. If you want to replicate the work or if you want to extend something. So here this is the file which is called DL COVID 19. So let's open this a Jupyter notebook file. I prepared this on Google Colab and if you want to learn about the collab i have a special uh, playlist for you guys if you want to learn collab so let's open this repository in collab in this notebook in collab and uh, we'll make sure that we have been, we are connected to the gpu so yes because we are going to run some deep learning models we'll save this and now let's connect to the let's confirm that i'm not a robot and now the Collab is connecting to a virtual machine and you see in the folder that I have now been connected to a virtual machine data description I have already provided you in the initial uh, starting of the videos what I did I have cloned this repository into my virtual machine so what I did uh, basically if I first cut this part and run this part you say I would say run anyway and now see there is nothing over here in this uh, virtual machine as soon as I clone this thing see this COVID CT repository has been cloned and as soon as it will stop finish I will show you in more detail what's going to happen so now the repository has been cloned and let's uh, so now you see that in this repository there is a folder called image processed and in, in image process there are two zip files uh, first zip file is the covid uh, image file and second one is uh, ct non uh, covid file and uh, all the images are there so we need to unzip them so let's unzip those files and you see we have finished the unzipping and see now the two folders have been created which is first folder is ct covid where all the covid images are there and if you see in ct non covid images so uh, in the virtual machine we have these files so if i open anything any file if just i double click so you see the file the images are like this you can see it from here and uh, what I did next that I have now means based on these two folders. So with this is CT COVID and this CT non COVID. So what I did, I have renamed all the files because uh, 
just to split the data and to means just to pre-process the data uh, means I need to rename all the images into each folder so I have mentioned this code to rename all the files so as soon as I yes so you see now all the files I have started because of the counting so see now all the files are renamed from COVID-1 up to the the number of files in the each folder now what I did I created a base directory base directory why because whatever the files are present over here I'm going to copy them into a new folder called COVID-19 CT and see there is no such folder exists as soon as I click it here and I refresh it a new COVID-19 CT folder is created and now under that what I did I have created three folders one folder is training other is validation and then test why I did that because I want to first train my model and then on uh, during the training process I need to validate and this is test part if means to check out of the sample means out of the training data it means the performance we need to keep some images for testing evaluation sometime we know and uh, in each training and validation and test folder we have covid non covid folder covid non covid folder covid non covid folder so, so key currently this folder is empty as soon as i run it refresh it see all three folders will be created test train and validation and if you click under that there is covid non covid covid non covid and validation covid non covid now i mentioned their locations their path now the first 250 images in this uh, covid data i will be copying them into my training folder and then uh, 250 to 300 images into my validation folder and then 300 to 348 into my test folder so let's do that we are done and now let's print that each folder how many images so you see total covid images 250 non covid 250 50 for this 50 for validation 48 for test and 48 for this now what i did i have created a very basic and a simple deep learning model using keras and uh, i imagine that the keras has already been installed uh, means in the virtual machine so i'm directly importing from keras layers and model and here I used a sequential model, a convolution neural network with the first layer of 32 kernels, ReLU function, input size of 150. Then using max polling layer, con 2D, max polling, con 2D, max. So here I have not used any kind of regularization or maybe dropout or any kind of thing. Simple max polling, convol, max pool, ReLU, convol, max pool, ReLU. That's it. And then we compile using binary cross entropy function because it's a binary classification problem and we set the accuracy as because it's a balanced uh, means because we are keeping in both the folders in COVID and non-COVID data we are keeping the same number of files so accuracy is a good measure so let's compile and see the summary of the model so it's using tensorflow as the as the backend and hopefully it will not give any error so let's see yes it's done so you see this is the summary of a model there are going to be three uh, 34 means th yeah 34 lakh 53,000 parameters to be trained now what I'm going to use I'm going to use a little bit of data augmentation although I'm not doing any kind of data augmentation because I'm going to using the this uh, image generator kind of uh, data augmentation function where uh, i'm going to just rescaling my images so using this function i did a very bit small bit of pre-processing and then i'm fitting my model so let's see uh, let's start fitting the model and uh, i put it for 30 epochs and per epoch it will in each epoch there are going to be 100 steps so you see the steps starting in each epoch so it's training the validation accuracy accuracy is currently training accuracy starting from 61 percent validation accuracy 76 percent which is pretty good and uh, second step c the accuracy has been improved from 61 to 74 validation accuracy slightly improved now here accuracy gone from 74 to 81 and 79 validation improved and let's see when this model will complete
so now guys the model is trained and uh, let's see what is the performance so you can see the accuracy is nearly 99% and the validation accuracy is 88% so let's do in the plot check and you'll see oh, that the model is in the training accuracy it's going from 60% to nearly 100% and although the validation accuracy is not improving so that means the model is overfitting it's fitting the noise in the data so what how we can improve this model so we are going to improving the model using dropout and data augmentation so just to those who don't know what is dropout the dropout is a technique to prevent the uh, overfitting it's a kind of a regularization where what we are going to do you are going to simply means hide neurons uh, in the hidden in the layers you are going to uh, block out some of the neurons and force other neurons to learn the representation of the data so this is going to happen means this is a very famous technique to prevent their overfitting and in the data augmentation what will happen we'll augment the data into different uh, orientations rotation we are going to rotate the image we are going to shift the image we are going to rescale the image share the image zoom the image and horizontally flip the image so for example if you see this is the cat images and in this cat image we are going to slightly shifting the image sometime zooming the image taking a zoom image and then means means each image is used and means one image is used and multiple copies with different uh, orientation and different methods will be used and multiple copies of the image will be created so you see same model over here i have used same model but here at some points and I have named this model one and you can see at the last layer before the adding the dense layer I have added a dropout of 0 0.5 so that means before getting the fully connected layer fully connected network what I did I have added a dropout and uh, same everything but here in the data augmentation part you see I rescaled the images as above I rotate I'm rotating the images I'm shifting the range by 20%, height by 20%, sharing by 20%, zooming by 20% and horizontally flipping. I put it true, so which will allow the image to horizontally flipped and rest is same. So now you see, uh, I am use, fitting that model one over here with same, but instead of 30 epochs here, we are just going to take 20 epochs because if I take more time, it's going to take more time to train and let's see. Hopefully it will not give any error. So model one is not defined. Why? Because I've not run it before. So now the model is there and let's see now. Tick, 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 tick. Yes, started the fitting and let's see how it's going to perform. So guys, now the model is trained and you can see the accuracy goes to 73% and that validation accuracy goes to 70%. Now let's plot their performances and see. So you see uh, here what is sure the model is not overfitting and as we are improving the number of epochs, uh, the performance and accuracy both are going up. So that's a positive sign because if you compare our model previous so see we trained for 30 epochs and the model is overfitting just after five or ten epochs but here after just adding simple regularization and dropout what we did that uh, we improved the performance uh, we avoid the overfitting so i believe if we add more number of epochs, uh, the performance may go up and I have not tested it for the out of the sample data that is my uh, test sample. You are feel free to evaluate on that. So and the codes are available on my GitHub account that is the class of AI. Feel free to import this uh, means uh, clone this package and clone this repository and replicate this work. and. Uh, I would be happy to see the improvement and the modification in the codes and you can leave your comments and your performances on the comment section in the video 
and uh, uh, why we are doing this uh, one of the important question which uh, i was uh, uh, thinking that uh, why we are developing this because uh, if you see that for example if somebody feel the symptom right what they can do if you have an ct image right instead of sending your swab to the laboratory and wait for 24 hours to up to 48 hours to get the results back just uh, giving your ct image and getting the output and just by doing this simple thing if you are getting 77 percent accuracy or 75 percent accuracy i believe if we have more covid images and more non-covid images and we drain a good model with more number of layers or more parameters i would say we can reach up to 90 percent or maybe more which can help the medical practitioners to detect the COVID and uh, I hope you like this video and do please comment subscribe to my channel the class of AI and if you have any suggestion or feedback please uh, leave into the comment section of the video many thanks for watching thanks